Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our mentoring, weekly mentoring hour. Thank you so much for each one joining in today's uh, mentoring hour. Let's begin this session with a word of prayer. Uh, I would like to read a scripture portion from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 19. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and the revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his, work, of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We come before you with the before you with the throne of grace, Lord. Giving you thanks and praise for who you are in our life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We exalt your name, Lord. Father, as we surrender each one of us in your hand, we pray that you will enrich us with your word and with your spirit. Lord, I pray that you will increase each one of us with your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Lord. Enlighten us, Lord, in your word. Thank you, Father. Give us the deeper revelation of your word as we study, Lord. Thank you, Father. Lord, I surrender this mentoring hour in your hand. I pray that you will minister to us and you will continue to teach us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So we keep this time open. Feel free to post your questions or unmute and ask questions. Okay, I guess uh, unless and until we prepare to ask questions, um, can as uh, each one have responded to the call of God and we have set this time aside. Uh, do you have any future plans of uh, you know after completing the course? How many of you have plans to start your own ministry and how are you planning to do that? Anyone would like to share? Mukeshima, would you like to add? Would you like to share? Yes. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Mm, thank you, Mami. Uh, I would like to share with my friends uh, about uh, these courses. It has been changed in my life. Uh, as good as possible. Before I started to, to study in APC Bible College, I didn't know how to make difference between ministries and the divine and the deliverance. I was in a, I was in a dilemma. But nowadays, I've just know how God Called, called us and how God leads us in his ways to ministry. So I would like to share my testimonies because I've just know that God follows his words and God acts in us. God does many miracles among of us. Uh, and I've just know that we are instruments to exact God as work in this world. So uh, let me say thank you for APC Bible College staffs to prepare us. And uh, thank you for every student who study in this uh, college. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mukeshima, like, is there anyone who would like to 
share about your ministry plans, how you'd like to branch out, start your own ministry in the place where you are? Or how are you ministering in the area where you are? If you're already part of a ministry and you're serving, would you like to share your experience? Brother Christopher, would you like to share? Oh, yes, uh, Pastor. Good morning, uh, Um I um, actually, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm so, uh, uh, I feel very blessed that, you know, I've, I, I'm attending this uh, Bible college. Um, so even before I had started, uh, so I'm right now in my second year. And uh, even before I started off, I, I um, had this um, desire to, um, to, you get to you know to get more knowledgeable about the bible and um i was um, running a business at that time and uh, um because i i live some distance away from from the from the bible college i was really sort of really considering whether you know it was really feasible to do the bible college um given that uh, you know it would take me some time to reach there and you know um uh, actually uh, attended and then you know come back home so uh, um in some ways uh covid actually helped over here because you know everything uh, became online and um i uh, uh therefore was able to join you know attend the, uh, the college and uh, i'm still not very sure you know what i want to do um and what god wants me to do uh you know in this in this ministry uh, definitely, I have gained a lot of um, knowledge and uh, also trying in, in some ways to you know, apply some of that, uh, some of the learnings. And uh, but I'm not sure uh, what I what I want what I want to do, uh, you know, or rather what God wants me to do. Um, I don't run a business right now, so I have a lot a lot more time, uh, you know, to um, to uh, you know to do. Uh, um, to do God's work, uh, but it, as I said, I'm still, uh, you know, in this in this position where uh, I I need to uh, be able to get a get a clear message um, from God that you know where where I will be uh, in this in this ministry. Um, but nevertheless, you know, it's it's been a it's been a fantastic uh, journey, um, you know, getting to. Uh, know God more uh, through this Bible college and also to uh, you know share and also learn from all my uh, all, all the fellow students uh, in my class so all in all it's been a, it's been a fantastic um, experience thank you thank you brother Christopher for sharing we pray that um, as you see God God will make things clear for you in the area that you need to minister and serve continue to seek him till you receive that yeah aradhana would you like to share a zelitoli about your future plans or if you have plans to start your own ministry and how are you planning to do that okay pastor thank you so much for this time good morning to you all good morning. Uh, currently i'm with pastor homi in apc kohima and I'm just so thankful to Pastor Homi for connecting me to APC family. And I'm glad that I'm studying this Bible school, uh, Bible college. And it's been such a great experience, you know, learning the word of God. And I'm getting so much input and uh, spiritual understanding. And uh, I would say that uh, this Bible college has really disciplined me. You know, I'm so thankful. And, you know, uh, I'm so thankful to all the lecturers. I mean, like, uh, I wish that, you know, uh, we can get offline and learn the word of God together. It would have been such an amazing experience. But nevertheless, even in online, I mean, God is good. I mean, like, I'm learning a lot. And I'm looking forward for more learning. And uh, currently, like, um, my pastor has asked me to, you know, um, get involved in the youth ministry 
So by this February, like uh, I will be helping in the youth ministry and I'm praying, I'm looking forward that it's going to be a great experience. Yeah, I, I mean, like this is, this is uh, like I, uh, for me, for years I was praying that I want, uh, I want to be in a place where I'm fed spiritually and also like the spiritual covering is very important for me. So for years I was praying and at the right time, at the right season, God connected me to APC. So this is my church. This is my family. And I'm, I'm blessed and I'm, I'm glad to be a part of this family. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much, Zalitoli, for sharing, uh, sharing your heart so that, you know, uh, it's so wonderful to know that uh, the way you prayed and how God answered your prayer and uh, praise God for it. And we will continue to pray to God to lead you even in your future plans. Yes, Aradna, please feel free to go ahead and share. Uh, I also want to do a music. I want to play a music in uh, do a ministry in God, lead to people how to uh, believe in God. I like to share the gospel to people and children also. So, thank you for Bible College. They are teaching very really nicely to us. And I really love the teaching all the teacher has teaching us. So, thank you. Thank you, Aradhana. Thank you. We pray that uh, as you see God, you may grow strong in your word and in your spirit. And as you desire to serve him in many areas, we pray that God will lead you. Good, good. Thank you so much for sharing. And Brother Herbert, would you like to share? In the meanwhile, do anyone have questions? Please feel free to post it on the chat. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank, thank, thank you so much, Pastor. Um, we have John. Okay, please go ahead, Albert. After that, we'll take up a question from John Paul. Okay. Thank you so much. So, um, I would like to thank the pastors and the APC Church uh, at large uh, for really mentoring us and uh, giving us. Um, all the tools we need to spread in the ministry and uh, i hope uh, after completing uh, all the sessions i will be having enough skills to one i can think of making my own uh, church or seeing uh, the way of how i can uh, get more people know god um through making small groups um attending concerts yeah and uh, also i would like to increase my talents in um uh, like playing music like uh, singing yeah said so i see the way of how i can glorify god's name yeah Thank you so much, pastors. Thank you. Thank you, Herbert, for sharing. We pray that God will increase you in all the area and also increase you in the skill that is required for you to serve in the place where you are. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, yeah, we have a question from John Paul. Do we have any more information regarding the priest Zechariah who was murdered between the temple and after? The reference is Matthew 23, Matthew chapter 23, verse 35. Does this been recorded as the sin of Jews generally? Um, can I request one of our pastors? Would you like to take up this question? Hi, Diana. Yeah, Roshan, please go ahead. I mean, so I don't know about the second part of the question, as in it's been recorded as a sin generally or not. But uh, but I think uh, when Jesus is talking about Abel and Zechariah, from uh, what I know, uh, so Abel was like uh, 
is the first person that he cries out. Uh, it mentions that in Genesis 4, 10, right? Abel's blood cried out. And then uh, in the book of Second Chronicles, because uh, I think in the Hebrew Bible, I think Zechariah was the last, and that's the last book of the Hebrew Bible. Um, I think Second Chronicles 24, 22, uh, he says, um, uh, remember me, and then in other translations, it says, avenge me. So um, there is, I mean, it, I don't know of uh, any more information if it's been recorded uh, beyond that. So uh, that's all I'm able to add at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank so, you, Pastor Roshan. Sorry, John. Uh, Paul, you would like to add on to it? We are not able to hear you. My voice audible now? Yes, yes, now it's audible. Okay, sorry. Uh, so, yes, John, so we don't really know whether uh, any more details about how, uh, about Zechariah and especially the second part of your question, which said, uh, uh, is it the sin of Jews generally? Uh, but what we do know is like, so for example, uh, we know how Isaiah died, right? Uh, history says that he was uh, he was martyred, he was sown uh, into two. And then even when we look at uh, the disciples, uh, you know, history says that uh, you know, they were killed in these ways. Peter was, uh, you know, uh, crucified upside down. John was tried to be, was put in hot oil, but he did not die. So all of that, those are not in the Bible. Uh, but there are other sources, uh, other people who have written regarding, you know, uh, uh, these, uh, these, you know, these uh, men and women of God. So uh, we don't really have any details further on Zechariah, uh, but I'm sure that you know there, there could be material when when we look outside for other resources. There could be. Uh, information on that so uh, but is it the sin of the uh, the second part it says does this been recorded as the sin of the jews generally uh, uh, john can you uh, what 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 is that you know, can you just repeat that question uh, does this been is that okay does this uh, mean yeah my question was uh, because the first part says um, it is talking about Abel and Jesus is uh, informing them. Um, so the verse 35, I'll read it. So that upon you may fall the guilt of all the righteous blood shed on the earth from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Um, so I, I, I felt like, um, you know, Jesus is trying to, um, you know, point out they have killed the prophets earlier. Um, so I just wanted to know if Jesus mentioning this also as a Jews sin generally. Oh, okay. So whether Jesus is mentioning that uh, the Jews, this is a Jews sin or not. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, hey, can uh, I just uh, help out with sure, that? Sure, sure. Yeah. Sure, yes, yes, so here I think uh, Jesus is, uh, you know, uh, just telling the people about the religious leaders because they took pride in their heritage in being like the sons of Abraham. Uh, but, you know, they were more like behaving uh, like, you know, the sons of the devil. So uh, he spoke strongly about these religious leaders, uh, maybe for two reasons. First, that he did not want them to be deceived. Uh, by these religious leaders and um, secondly is not that you know Jesus was condemning them uh, that he did not like them he hated them uh, you know but uh, he knew that they were away from God and uh, you know he wanted them uh, to be warned of the coming uh, you know judgment that will be on them so that they can he did this so that they can repent of their sins and also uh, so that pay, so that the people around them, you know, are not taken up by uh, what they are doing and what they are saying. Uh, 
So uh, Jesus is basically saying that, you know, um, that they're taking pride in their heritage of being Abraham's sons, but they're living more like sons of the devil. And um, so Jesus is warning them of the coming judgment and uh, he's doing that so that, you know, they repent. We know that Jesus does not condemn anyone. He uh, he wants them all to repent of their sins so that uh, they don't come, uh, uh, they don't receive the judgment. So I don't think here basically it's uh, recording the sins of Jews because I don't think Jesus would, uh, you know, want to do that. He doesn't point out the sins of anybody. If you see even uh, people who brought, uh, you know, the woman caught in adultery, he doesn't point out the sin. He doesn't condemn her. Uh, but he just, you know, uh, ministers to them uh, at the point of their need. And uh, we see that they repent and go back. And, uh, regarding uh, the priest Zechariah, mm, uh, that's, he's mentioned in Second Chronicles, I think, in chapter uh, 24. Um, so then I but, think, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I think John's question is about the shedding of righteous blood. So he's not really asking about Zechariah, or he's asking about the the shedding of righteous blood, the guilt of that. So is that right, John? Yes, Pastor. So he's not asking about Abel or Zechariah or Berkiah. He's simply asking, so I think we need to understand the question first. His question is simply asking the guilt of the righteous blood that has been shed, which means all these prophets have been killed their blood has been shed so the guilt of that blood is upon the jewish people that's his question so he's not asking about abel or zechariah or berkiah he's asking about the guilt of the blood so that's the question that's what we must answer so when you look at it in scripture um, right from the time of abel the bible teaches us that and this is in genesis 9 right if a man sheds blood the guilt of that blood is upon that man so God will hold that person responsible for the shedding of that blood. So here, what Jesus is saying is this nation, that is the Jewish nation, is going to be held responsible for the shedding of innocent blood, which is a very biblical thing, right? Right from the beginning. He who sheds man's blood, he also will be held responsible. for the Genesis 9, I think, verse 6. I think. So... Uh, and this we see even in the, in the, you know, later on in the prophets, you know, even to Ezekiel, God says, Ezekiel, if you don't warn the people, their blood I will require at your hands. That means he's saying, look, uh, the, uh, if you don't warn the people, you're guilty of their blood. Their blood is on your hands. So that is a very biblical thing. And that's what John is asking. So the answer is yes. You know, they, as a, the Jewish people, have killed the prophets. They have shed innocent blood, and God will hold them responsible. They're going to be judged for it, and they're actually getting ready to do something even more, which is to shed the blood of Jesus Christ, and they're going to be held responsible for it. Right? To that extent, the answer is yes. That's what Jesus is referring to. Do you Thank want to follow Pastor. up your question, John? Uh, no, Pastor. Yeah. Sorry, I should have put in a better wording, but... Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Okay. So that's the his question was about the shedding of innocent blood. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Pastor, for that insight and clarity. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, John, for that question. Uh, yes, I request each one of us to please share your questions either through chat or you can unmute and ask. Anyone, you have questions? I see another question from John. Yes, Mr. Al uh, Christopher, we will come to you after this question. Um, also in Matthew 25, 35, for I was hungry and you have given me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I've heard some interpretations saying 
this regarding helping Jews during the tribulation. Is that so? Or is it the help that we do for the poor and needy at present? Thank you, John, for another question. Would any of our faculty would like to answer this? Um, yeah, John, I think the way yes. to respond to that is simply, you know, we work backwards. Uh, is the name of Jesus available to us today? Yes. Are there people in Jesus' name available to us today? Answer is yes. So the answer would be, if we do even the simplest of things to anybody today in Jesus' name, or to anyone who belongs to Christ today, it's doing it to him. So that's one way to answer that, you know, so will there be people and there are people today in the name of Jesus, there will be people in the name of Jesus during tribulation as well. Right. Uh, so the, 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 so the essence of the answer is yes. Uh, it, it doesn't have to do with the time frame. It is simply, and we do whoever we do, you know, in the name of Jesus, because you find other references to this in Matthew 10, when Jesus said, you know, whoever gives a cup of cold water to anyone in the name of a disciple is doing it to the Lord. In another, in the same chapter, Matt, Jesus says, you know, whoever receives you receives me and he who receives me receives him who sent me. So when we look at other references, the fact is, um, even now, if we do something to anybody in the name of Jesus or who belongs to Jesus, we're doing it to the Lord. The confusion that comes, I think, is because Matthew 25 is given in the context of, you know, the end times. So Matthew 24, he starts talking about the end times. All the other uh, subsequent parables are all in relation to the end times. And Matthew 25 is also in relation to, you know, that uh, the end times and the judgment. So I think that's where this whole confusion comes. Uh, but I think that would not be the correct interpretation simply because there are other scriptures, you know, that uh, indicate that anytime, anywhere, you do something to the name of Jesus or in the name of Jesus, to someone who's a disciple, we are doing it to the Lord. So we look at it from that perspective. And so we don't, uh, we shouldn't limit that, what he said in verse 35, as only for the Jews during tribulation. Hope that helps, John. Yes, Pastor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, we also uh, we see Christopher Albuquerque raised his hand. Over to Christopher. You can please unmute and ask your question. Hi, yes. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Uh, my question is actually around uh, uh, you know the, um, the the Jewish the, the Jews and uh, you know the the, the, um, the community of Jews uh, and their place in uh, in church history, where there seems to be. A lot of um, you know, uh, you know, it's like it's a bit like a pendulum, you know, where they are swinging from, from uh, uh, you know, being not really uh, you know doing uh, you know uh, things that uh, you know that are that are pleasing to God, um, uh, as as you know as as uh, Pastor Ashish just mentioned, you know, they they uh, you know they have they've shed blood. Uh, in in and you know that that has happened. They even you know have you know turned against uh, you know G uh, Jesus. Um, they have uh, also uh, you know in in history they have also gone through very very difficult times. And um, yet there is there seems to be a lot of um, uh, you know f f focus on them um, even uh, even in the end times. You know, but these 144,000 uh, Jews uh, also play a, play an important part in uh, uh, during the end times. So, um, I mean, it, this is more of an observation as well as uh, you know a question of you know, um, you know the significance of the of the Jews uh, and you know uh, you know how they have how they have sort of you know uh, played a part in in church history and. Uh, uh, you know how they have you know they, they've not even you know even you know recognized that you know jesus was um, uh, was god you know uh, when he when he was on the earth so uh, uh 
how how is this 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 focus on you know on this particular nation which uh, this particular community um, why is this happened and um, uh, you know how um, yeah, I, I mean it's a little difficult for me to phrase this question but i'm just trying to uh, you know understand uh, their their place in history uh, in church history and uh, the importance of their uh, you know what they have uh, what they have done thank you thank you brother pastor would you like to take up this question pastor uh sure uh, but would somebody else want to try uh, anybody else uh, anybody else any of the other passes would you like to roshan pastor roshan pastor selina paul anyone would like to take up this question so so the question is basically you know uh how what is the importance of the jews in the history of the faith christian you know so uh, there's so much that has happened i mean they've shed blood and they've done all of these things but why you know basically is why did god choose them and what is their role in now that we are cross from the new testament church so what is the role of the jews especially i mean historically and also in the current uh, thing Okay, let me just answer the quickly answer. Um, uh, so, so uh, Christopher, uh, what's the importance of the Jews? The, the the biggest thing that we see in Scripture is that God chose to send the Savior of the world through that race of people. So, in order, you know, and and this is something we are all very aware of that uh, God decided, you know, in Genesis in Genesis three, He's going to send. the messiah the seed of the woman in order to do that he needed a people and a place through whom jesus would come because he was going to be born as a human person so he needed a people and a place where the savior of the world would be born and god sovereignly chose so this is you know it was a decision god made not influenced by any human but he chose Abraham and his descendants through whom the savior of the world Christ the Messiah would come so that is why they are so important and uh, Romans chapter 9 you know verse i think verse 3 or 4 um i give you the exact verse but Paul um, uh, is um, highlighting you know it says uh, Romans 9 uh, verse 4 and 5 Romans 9 4 and 5 he says you know hey these are the people through whom god gave the covenants he gave everything like he really made them a special people because one reason one reason through them would come the messiah now of course god's intent was not to remain with the jews but the salvation of the whole world so but he had to start somewhere with some with our people and our place so the people were the jews the place was jerusalem or the entire nation israel the land that he chose but the goal was the whole world so after jesus came death burial resurrection program expanded so to speak he said it's for the whole world and that's where the church comes in the church is really all believers everybody who believe in jesus but god has not stopped working with the uh, the the Jews and uh, that same chapter Romans 9 and i think it's verse 25 uh, let me give you the exact verse um uh, um um it, oh, no, it's not able to remember the exact verse uh Romans all over 11 25 Okay. So uh Romans 11 25. So actually Romans 9 10 11 these three chapters Paul is explaining God's dealing with Israel and the church. And then he sums it up in Romans 11 25 that uh the reason you know uh the 
Jews have rejected Christ and all whatever they've done and all that's it's that okay it's temporary they're temporarily in this state God is bringing the Gentiles in and eventually he'll get them all together uh, you know to salvation so um, and that's what's happening so although the focus today uh, you know this the church this we are in the church age God has not stopped working his plan for the Jews has not been abandoned or you know stopped you could say maybe it's he's still there but it looks like it's on a pause but he's still working on the Jews the goal is Romans 11 25 the Gentiles will come in and will all together be brought to Christ does that answer your question Christopher uh, yes pastor I think this has given me <laughs> a lot to think about uh, definitely I've, I've not heard this 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 kind of these this this perspective on it so yes definitely helps thank you Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Christopher, for the question. We have another question from Zelitoli. Um, when will the tribulation come? After the second coming of Christ or before the second coming? Because there are so many point of views. Um, yeah. Any of our faculty would like to take up this question? Uh, Mukeshwam, I see your hand raised. I will come to you after this question. Yeah, Dana, is it okay if I can just bring in a few Yes, points? yes, please. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Zelatoli, for that question. Uh, yes, uh, as a church, uh, oh, you know, globally, there are three different point of views uh, regarding the second coming of Jesus Christ. First is the pre-tribulation, which is, uh, uh, you know, they believe that. Uh, oh, when was it? Okay, uh, so when will the tribulation come? Yes. Yeah, so some believe in the pre-tribulation. There's mid-tribulation and there's post-tribulation. Uh, now we, as a church, believe in the pre-tribulation. Uh, and why we believe that is because uh, Second Thessalonians chapter two, uh, I think it verses two was five. Sorry, two was three. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse three. Uh, just read that. Second Thessalonians chapter two verse three. Uh, Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for that day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed the man doomed to destru destruction. So uh, so that's why, uh, uh, Zeratoni, we believe, uh, as a church, APC, we believe in uh, pre-tribulation, uh, which is uh, uh, there, there will be the rapture of the church, uh, and then the lawless man, which is uh, the Antichrist, will be revealed, and then comes the seven-year tribulation. Uh, and, uh, and there are different ministries uh, different uh, opinions on this. Some believe in the mid tribulation, which is uh, after the three and a half years of uh, when the Antichrist uh, breaks the peace treaty. Uh, uh, you know, they say that even it, that that is the beginning of the tribulation. And there is also opinions on the tribulation after the seven years of uh, you know after the entire seven years. So, uh, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, maybe anyone else can please add to that. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, I would request Pastor Jakes or Roshan, Pastor Salina, to please go ahead and add to it. Yeah, thank you, Diana. So thank you, Zerutili, for your uh, question. Uh, we'll have the rapture first. The rapture will take place first, as uh, we, we read in First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17. Uh, says that after that we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air uh, so that we will be with the Lord forever and um, after uh, you know uh, Jesus removes all the believers from the earth uh, then will the you know uh, tribulation happen so then we'll begin the first half of the tribulation like Paul said it will be a seven year period and then we'll begin the first uh, half of the tribulation Hope it answered your question. Salatoli? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Selina. Thank you, Zalatholi, for that question. Pastor, you would like to add anything to it? Yeah. Yeah. So, Zalatholi, in second year, you'll have your course on the end times. So we'll yeah. get into all the details, right? So you will understand everything very clearly. Uh, but like what was already shared, uh, uh, you know, there are different opinions, as you mentioned. There are people who believe in uh, the pre-tribulation rapture of the church, the mid-tribulation, the post-tribulation rapture of the church. The, so the rapture. So there are different opinions. But like as uh, Paul shared, we as a church, we believe in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. So there's a rapture and then the seven years of tribulation. All the details we'll get into second year. All right, second year end times course. <laughs> See you then. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, I, uh, Mukeshima, I saw your hand was raised. Would you like to ask a question? Is that a question? Yes, Mami. Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, okay. I would like to ask you my question. Nowadays, we have something which is like battle. Uh, according to two groups, some groups are saying that you have redeemed our redemption is by God as a grace. We don't take care for anything, especially God as a grace. But the other says that even if we have redeemed by God as a grace, but you can still do something which is like a, we can still in sinful life because God as a grace will, will make us to be free in front of God. So is it that right or there's something behind which is like a devil system to, to destroy many people from redemption? So I would like you to know more about that. How is the difference between God as a grace and the, uh, according to the Ro Romans chapter 6, I, I feel like he, I'm in dilemma. Can you help me please in that word? Yes. Yes, brother, mm. thank you so much for asking. Uh, yeah, Pastor, Pastor, would you like to go ahead? Yeah, I think, think what we'll do is we'll try to paraphrase or restate um, Keshimana's question from what I understood. Um, so what the question he's asking is, there is grace by which we are saved, uh, but there's also, you know, uh, sin and what the devil does. So I think the question, uh, which can take a believer out of faith. So I think the question Mukeshi Mana is asking is, if I want to put it, restate it, can a believer lose his salvation? Is that your question, uh, Mukeshi Mana? Can a person who is saved as a result of sin actually lose his salvation, redemption? Is that what you're asking? Yes, it's like that. Okay. So that's the question. All right. So I just wanted to re restate it now. Anybody could answer that, please. Pastor Selina, would you like to answer? His, uh, yes, thank you, Diana. His question is, uh, you know, once somebody is saved, will they lose their salvation? Uh is that the question? Or is talking about grace because I heard grace as well? No, no. So what he's saying is we are saved by grace. Okay. So can a believer lose their salvation because of them, you know, sinning and going away from God and so on? So we are saved by grace, uh, but can we lose our salvation? What God has given to us by grace. So the answer, yeah. So that's the question. Okay, so once a person is, thank you, Pastor. So once a person is saved, uh, you know, uh, they are saved for eternity. Um, but, uh, you know, if they go back into sin and, uh, you know, go back from God's ways and his standards, uh, you know, um, yes, God, the Holy Spirit will work in their lives, will try to bring them back, uh, you know, to... Um, 
to their back restoring back their relationship with god but uh, you know if uh, they do not turn back then uh, what uh, there's a verse in hebrews that says this you know uh, once a person has in, you known and tasted uh, uh, of the salvation and but have treated the blood of the covenant as an unholy thing by trampling it under their feet you know uh, then there's no more forgiveness of sins but only a dreadful punishment but uh, we do not we can't judge to what extent uh, you know uh, uh, the sin is or uh, you know okay what is the punishment that you know what is the extent of sin that they are involved in uh, that you know um, this there, there will be no forgiveness but we know that once a person is saved they are forever saved uh, uh, but uh, this verse says that you know there's no more forgiveness of sins but we can't judge the extent of their uh, of their sin so it's uh, only god who will you know make the judgment but uh, yes once a person is saved they will be saved for eternity um, and uh, yeah, I hope and just that to add to yeah, thanks, Selena. Just to add to what Selena shared, um, yeah, we are saved, um, justified by the grace of God, and um, we also have a responsibility to uh, to to continue in um, in 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 living our lives consecration consecrated to the Lord to live uh, our life in righteousness, um, like. Um, the same chapter which um, uh, Kishima uh, he, uh, referred to, Romans chapter 6, um, 6 and verse 13 talks about, um, you know, reckoning ourselves <clears throat> to be dead to sin, but, <clears throat> sorry, alive to God in Christ Jesus. And also the instruction to not let sin reign and, and to present our members as members of uh, uh, to righteousness and not to unrighteousness. because. Um, Sin shall not have dominion over us, but we need to consciously present ourselves as instruments of righteousness and, and our members as instruments of righteousness to God. So, so that's the responsibility that we have. Now, uh, <clears throat> uh, now we, we do sin knowingly or unknowingly, but when we uh, intentionally live a lifestyle of sin, you know, when we know that uh, it is something is uh, sinful, but then we continue to you know, go against God's ways and, um, you know, live a life of a carnal believer. Um, the thing is, um, Hebrews 3 talks about um, how sin is deceitful and it hardens us. Right? So we continue, if, if a person continues like that, um, then there is a possibility that the person is being deceived and being hardened to the voice of God and even come to the to the point of rejecting Christ. You know, that's what uh, Hebrews 10 warns us about. You know, we, we can come to that place of even rejecting Christ and, and uh, treating as something common the work of the Holy Spirit and, and, uh, and the and sacrifice that was made. So a believer can come to that place, but um, we, um, uh, but we are empowered by the Spirit to live a life uh, in the grace of God, to live a life of forgiveness. So well, while that danger is always uh, is there for someone who can intentionally go and reject Christ, but um, we can live uh, an empowered life, um, a righteous life empowered by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah, just, to, just to bring some clarity here. Uh, Mukesh, may I just to answer your question? The answer is yes. A believer can lose their salvation. Okay? Um, that's the answer. Uh, we see many scriptures I've just shared with you that, yeah, we are saved by grace. But the scriptures teach us that, yes, a believer can lose their salvation. The gift itself is eternal. It's eternal life. But uh, God has called us to, you know, we are supposed to, as Pastor X was explaining, we to walk in a certain way for us to be saved. So that's the answer. Answer is yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mukeshima, for that wonderful question. As we are running short on time, thank you each one for joining in today's session. It was uh, we had some uh, good and interesting questions that we discussed today. Thank you so much. Let's bring this session to a close. Can I request one of us to please lead, uh, dismiss us in a word of prayer?
Can I request Father Lord we Kishwa? thank yes. you. Ahead, Father, we thank you for the time uh, you have given us to be in your presence and to clarify our doubts. And thank you for each of the faculty who shared their insights for each questions. We pray, O oh God, that we would continue to uh, walk in the covenant that you have called us and help us to understand uh, the purposes that you have kept before us, Lord Jesus, and help us to be more stronger in the word understanding what you have written in the scriptures and to make it a practice in our life, oh God. We praise you in Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Thank you so much for joining in today's mentoring session. See you all tomorrow. God bless. Have a good day. Thank you.